Dear learners, greetings from IIT Gowati. We are in the MOOC course, Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustion, Module 4, Properties of Gas Mixture. So in this module, we have covered three lectures. First one was Ideal Gas and Real Gas, its modeling. Second one was intended for gas mixtures and multi-component systems. In the third lectures, we have used the concept of ideal gas mixtures and subsequently we found out how thermodynamic properties for individual components as well as for the mixture are going to be calculated. Now in the last lecture of this module for today is the mixing analysis of thermodynamic systems. That means system either it is mixed individually the substances are in the pure component form now they have mixed completely now when they mix completely how you are going to analyze and in fact here will deliver some of the important applications of mixing process in various topics like in IC engines in mixing of adiabatic streams or uh, maybe in the psychrometrics you used to have uh, the mixing process of air and water vapor. In the combustion study it is the mixing process of air and the fuel. So all these things which are going to be used in our day to day life we will talk about uh, the modeling aspects of mixing process for various thermodynamic systems. So theme of this topic for this lecture 18 is mixing analysis of thermodynamic systems. First we will discuss about mechanism of mixing formations. Then we will think about the mixing if it happens at constant composition how the thermodynamic modeling is going to take place. Now as a case studies we will deal with the four important cases like compression of ideal gas mixture, expansion of, of an ideal gas mixture, adiabatic mixing at constant volume and adiabatic mixing of two streams. So these things I will put them as some of uh, the case studies. So these four uh, case studies you are going to discuss the aspects and when you are going to discuss you will try to find out what are the property evaluations in terms of enthalpy, entropy and internal energy. Now let us start the formation of mixture or the concept of mixture formations. So I call it as a mechanism of mixture formations. So when you deal with the non-reacting mixtures the thermodynamic analysis deals with the conservation of mass and energy principle as well as the second law. So second law will give you the property entropy. So this we normally used to do when we consider the working medium as a pure substance. But when you deal with the mixture we require an additional data which is the composition of that component in the mixture. So th there are two aspects of this, one is the component of that pure substance in the mixtures, second one is behavioral aspects of the mixture. So these behavioral aspects of this mixture we debated in our last class that we will model it in a as an ideal gas format. Now coming back to the mixture, there are two categories, first one is that mixture is already formed. It means already there is a mixture which is uh, existed in a container or uh, some uh, medium. Now we study the process in which there is no change in the mixture composition. The second one consider the formation of mixtures from individual components that are initially separate. So the second one is like a mixing of two streams or multi more number of streams. One can think that during combustion we have a fuel stream, we have air stream. So after combustion, we get a uh, products, we call this as a combustion uh, mixture. So in fact, in psychrometrics, we have air and we have air stream and we have water vapor stream and they mix together. So we call this as a mixture. 
but uh, in the first one the mixture is already formed like in an IC engine the pre-mixed air and fuel is in the combustion chamber then once there is a change in the temperature and pressure that the composition uh, also changes so these two uh, situations you are going to model now when you deal with the second aspects like when you talk about mechanism of mixing process in the second approach so this uh, mixer uh, process is always irreversible because this mixer is formed spontaneously and the work input from the surrounding uh, that means if you want to separate the gases out of this mixture then we would be requiring work input from the surroundings and this is never possible so we call this process to be an irreversible process so we need to calculate that means when you deal with the thermodynamic properties that means the parameter that needs to be going to be evaluated for irreversibility calculation is the entropy the irreversibility why it irreversibility term comes into picture because we said that the individual components that are they are initially separate so when they are initially separate they may be at different temperatures they may have different pressures and they are also distinguishable from one another that means different gases so because of this reason the process is irreversible nature now let us target uh, them one by one first one is that we consider a process mixing process at constant compositions so here if you look at this picture we have uh, a mixer at state 1 and state 2 so what it means is that initially the mixer is formed with j number of gases with their mole fractions n1 n2 and nj and it is at initial pressure and temperature t1 and p1 now there is a change of state that happens but at same composition the composition do not change but what changes is the pressure and temperatures so because of this change of state we will land off in the change of energies like we have initial internal energy u1 we have will have final internal energy u2 we have initial enthalpy h1 and final enthalpy h2 initial entropy s1 and final enthalpy s2 so uh, our previous studies or previous expressions uh, enables us to calculate the changes in the internal energy of the mixer during the process so if you can calculate that uh, what is u2 minus u1 that u2 change in the internal energy of the mixer between state 2 and 1 we can represent in its it, its molar value that means molar specific internal energy multiplied by its mole fractions so this molar value has to be considered at two different states that is temperature t2 final state and temperature t1 initial states by doing so you can find out change in the molar specific internal energy which is the summation of the internal energy of any uh, of an individual component i from state 2 and state 1 multiplied by its mole fraction so if you make summation of for all the components we we'll ca we can calculate the total change in the molar specific internal energy similar philosophy can also be applied to calculate the change in the enthalpy molar specific enthalpy then moving further we can also calculate the change in the entropy but uh, when you calculate the change in the entropy entropy change requires that the entropy change is to be calculated at pressures for the each and each each component i will have its own partial pressure and this partial pressure is uh, going to be different for the state uh, initial state and final state so in this, at the initial state the partial pressure for the component i is p i 1 and in the final state 2 the partial pressure for the component i is p i 2 but uh, under also done the temperature uh, of uh, the component i that is initial state at is t2 and final state at t2 and initial state at t1 so this particular expressions can be represented in summation for that s2 minus s1 in terms of the molar specific change in the 
entropy multiplied by its mole fraction. Now here the important aspects that we need to calculate that what is this delta Si that is for component I we want to find out molar specific internal energy and by definition or the entropy calculation earlier this has to be calculated with the concept of absolute entropy. Now when you deal with the absolute entropy the choice of pressure is meaningless. So we have to calculate the absolute entropy for the component I at temperature T2, absolute entropy for the component I at temperature T1. Uh, then pressure effect will come uh, difference this of these two minus R bar ln Pi2 by Pi1. Now when I say this is a constant fixed mixture composition Pi2 and Pi1 ratio will have same ratio P2 by P1. So this is how we have to calculate this is this number gives the change in the molar specific entropy as a function of absolute entropy change and minus R bar ln P2 by P1. This is one way of evaluation other way of evaluation is that we can uh, also calculate the same uh, things through uh, CP calculations. So delta S we can write is CP times ln by definition entropy change is CP times ln T2 by T1 minus R ln P2 by P1. Then this CP for the component I is represented by CP bar uh, PI and knowing this value we can use this expressions because we all know that what is the final state T2 and P2 and uh, what is the initial state P1 and T1. Then we will move to different case studies. First case is the compression of an ideal gas mixture. So here the compression of an, an ideal gas mixture means that for the sake of an example you can say that we have a piston cylinder device which contains certain gas here I have written as uh, some uh, mass of carbon dioxide and some mass of nitrogen and this mixture is being compressed by this piston. Now when it is compressed the initial state of the mixture which is state 1 moves to state 2 in a polytropic crop process with some polytropic index let us say n is equal to some value of n. Now when uh, on such a things there then how you are going to calculate the overall properties of the mixture. So there are certain assumptions that we are going to say is that the changes in the kinetic energy and potential energy uh, between initial and final state is ignored. Each component of the mixtures behaves as if it were an ideal gas occupying the entire system volume at mixture temperature and pressure. Then uh, mixture composition remains constant through during the compressions. Having such this uh, assumptions, we can write the polytropic equation PV to the power n is equal to constant. Side by side we can find the pressure, temperature and volume relations between initial state and the final states. Then work transfer since it is a compression process, work transfer can be calculated as integral of PdV. Then uh, from this equation we can calculate work transfer. Uh, since it is a closed system analysis, so we can find out the energy balance equation for the closed system Q is equal to delta U plus W. And of course we know from Q and W we can also calculate the internal energy change U2 minus U1. This U2 and U1 has to be calculated with respect to state 2 and state 1 by knowing the composition of each individual gases. The next example that we are going to discuss is the expansion of an ideal gas. So when I say expansion, one typical expansion process as you can see that a gas from its initial state P1, B1, T1 expands in a nozzle. So this is a schematic diagram of nozzle. So the characteristics feature of the nozzle it increases the flow expands in the nozzle and as a result of which and the process in this nozzle is normally treated to be isentropic process. Now here in our previous analysis we used to say that only one gas expands in the nozzle. So analysis of the treatment was 
little bit different and, and simple when you dealt with the control volume analysis for the nozzle. But here a mixture expands in the nozzle. When a mixture expands, one thing we are uh, assuming that they have constant composition. Mixture composition remains constant and the state of each component is defined by its initial by its temperature and the partial pressures. Same way we also can say that kinetic energy and potential energy effects can be ignored. And the process in a nozzle is typically considered to be an isentropic process. So isentropic process means the change in the entropy between state 2 and 1 is 0. So we can calculate S2 bar minus S1 bar and that is nothing but is uh, the its mole fraction of component 1 multiplied by delta S bar for the component 1 plus Y2 into delta S bar of S2. And again if you can recall our previous relations delta S1 uh, bar and delta S2 bar can, can be calculated with the concept of absolute entropies and partial pressures of each gas. And normally when you use the word nozzle we used to say that it has to increase the flow velocity. So the flow velocity is associated with the enthalpy calculations where flow velocity is calculated with respect to enthalpy information. And of course here we are going to use another relations in terms of the molecular weight and this molecular weight is required for calculation of enthalpy and the enthalpy and flow velocity relations can be related as H1 minus H2 plus B1 square minus B2 square by 2 is equal to 0. And this, is, this model was done for an energy rate balance for an one inlet and one exit control volume at steady state. Next type of uh, mixing we call this as a adiabatic mixing at constant volume. Now in our previous study, previous two cases, we have seen that the mixer was at constant compositions and during this process of change of state, the composition do not change. Okay. But and the mixer expands or uh, compress and during the change of state. And now we will consider a situation where the components are initially separate and after uh, certain situations they form a mixture. One such case is adiabatic mixing at constant volume. So if you look at this particular figure it says that there are two gases nitrogen and oxygen and they are separated by a partition and entire system is insulated that means insulated means there is no heat transfer into or out of the systems. Now this partition or now you want trying to mix. So when we are trying to mix we allow this partition to come um, to open through this bar. Now when this, this opens the initial state of nitrogen and initial state of oxygen is going to change. So at what does the consequence could be? The initial mole fraction of oxygen could change, oxygen and um, the number of moles of this is going to change and since they are at different pressures at steady state there will be pressure equalization and we will have an effective temperature of the mixture. So, to analyze such a things, we assume certain things like system is taken to be the combination of both the gases and each gas behaves as an ideal gas. The final mixture also acts as an ideal gas. And another important aspect is that the each mixture component occupies total volume. That means after this the valve or this partition is over, each mixture components occupies the total volume and exhibits the mixture temperature and they have the common uniform temperatures. There is no change in the kinetic and potential energy. So having said this, we are going to analyze this particular case with energy balance and entropy balance equations. So energy balance, we have used the first law which talks about the information since it is a closed systems we have to deal with the internal energy 
delta u plus w and this equation there is no heat transfer and work transfer so u2 minus u1 will be 0. Now let us see how you are going to calculate this u2 and u1. So if you say u1 that means u1 means you have to calculate this u1 value based on its molar composition. So that means if it is gas 1 its number of moles is ng1 and multiplied by its molar internal energy for gas 1 at temperature Tg1. And similar way the internal energy for gas 2 can be calculated by its number of moles and its molar value of specific internal energy at temperature T, Tg2. So, this way we calculate the total internal energy of the systems at system and then similar way we can calculate the total internal energy at the when, the, uh, when it goes to the change of state. So, from these uh, things we can uh, rearrange these equations and also internal energy is a function of specific volume. So, you can introduce the specific volume of the gas from mole fractions uh, from mass and mole we can get the molecular weight. So, using these relations ultimately what we are going to target that when the final state is reached what is the final temperature T2, what is the final volume V and final pressure P. So, this is how the energy balance equation will give you all these numbers. Then we have to think about entropy balance equations. That means here it is a closed system entropy balance S2 minus S1 is equal to integral of dq by t 1 to 2 and for this situations dq goes to 0 because there is no heat transfer. So, it will give you the entropy production through this change in the entropy. Now, S2 has to be calculated at uh, means total entropy at state 2 has to be calculated with respect to final pressure temperature. S1 has to be calculated with respect to at the initial state of this mixture. Now, if you look at here, now S1 if you calculate it is a function of its number of moles of this gas and molar specific internal energy which is a function of Tg1 and Tg2 for the gas 1 and it is function of Tg2 and Pg2 for the gas 2. Similarly, when you go to the final state, final pressure of the gas 1 will be mole fraction Y1 into P2 and mole fraction of for the gas uh, 2 would be Y2 into P2. P2 is your final pressure which is this. Then by putting this this will give you an expressions of entropy production during this meshing process. Now, while doing so, we can also bring out this change in the entropy which is a function of Cp and R. So, these relations has to be used. So, basically when you solve the problem and try to find out how I am going to introduce the property values, then the picture will be more clear. So, we will discuss them down the line ok and the other one is that adiabatic mixing of two streams. So, here uh, this is a situation where mainly we come across this particular concept when you deal with the psychromatics when air and water vapors are mixed. So, when I say adiabatic mixing of two streams like I can assume that something that there is a passage two streams or two gases from state 1 and 2 they come and they mix and finally the mixture goes to at state 3. So, we say we can say gas 1, gas 2 and it is formed as a mixture of two gas conditions of gas 1 may be gas 1 may be P1, T1 and condition for gas 2 may be P2, T2, Mg1, Mg2. Gas 3 could be final pressure P3, P3 and Mg3 and it is a mixing process is adiabatic. So, there is no heat transfer into this medium. 
Now for this situation we have to write down the mass balance and energy balance simultaneously. So you have to consider this mass balance molar mass of the mixture. So this will give you the mole fraction and mass fraction of this mixture. In addition to that we also I forgot to mention we have to consider also energy balance equation. So mass and energy balance equations need to be taken together to calculate the states of thermodynamic states of the mixture. So thermodynamic state of mixture is to be calculated with respect to uh, is calculated through mass balance, mass and energy balance. Now apart from this we also need to find out the entropy balance. And because it is an adiabatic mixing process and process is irreversible, so entropy balance will give you what is the entropy production rate. So this is also we have to use the similar philosophy that what is the entropy at state 1 for the gas 1 and this is to be evaluated at gas pressure and temperature, temperature and pressure for the gas 1. For gas 2 it has to be evaluated at its uh, corresponding pressure P2 and T2 and after the formation of the mixer the composition of uh, the components may change. So that is what we will land up having the mole fraction for the gas 1 and for mole fraction for the gas 2. And once you know this mole fraction and final pressures the entropy will be evaluated at that temperature and pressures. By inserting this value we can calculate the entropy production term. Now here important thing that need to be find out for entropy calculations, the change in the entropy for the gas 1 from its final state to initial state, we need to require the concept of absolute entropy and this absolute entropy values can be used to find the entropy change for respective gases. So here it is an example of two streams. So there are situations you can have multiple number of streams and for each streams these terms needs to be evaluated. Okay, this is all about the four different important cases that is going to be considered for the mixing analysis. Now based on our uh, analysis for the discussion for the lecture today, we are now going to solve some numerical problems uh, which is nothing but the two different case studies what we have studied. First one is mixing process at constant compositions. So when I say constant composition I will use the same example or same problem which figure which has been given in the earlier discussions. So we will be using the values directly here and let us see how you need to go about while solving the numerical problems. So here the problem statement is that we have a mixture of 0.3 kg of carbon dioxide and 0.2 kg of nitrogen and they are uh, getting compressed. This mixture is compressed from its initial state which is 1 bar 300 Kelvin to a final pressure. So final pressure of the mixture is 3 bar and this process, this is a compression process that means we go from initial state to final state through a polytropic process and this polytropic index is given in this figure as n is equal to 1.25. So po this polytropic equation pv to the power n is equal to constant where n we say it is 1.25. Now if this is the situation let us see how you are will go about. So let us start the solutions. So the first uh, question that was asked we have to find out the when the, the final temperatures we are given with the final pressure but we are not given with the final temperatures. Now to do this final temperature calculations now for a polytropic process
we can write we satisfy pv to the power n is equal to constant we write this as t2 by t1 is equal to p2 by p1 to the power n minus 1 by n so we are given with p1 1 bar p2 3 bar t1 300 Kelvin n 1.25 so by inserting this number we get t2 is 374 Kelvin so we get the final temperature as 374 Kelvin second part we are going to evaluate what is the work transfer So, work transfer is normally given as integral of P dV from 1 to 2. So, you have this equation given where PV to the power n is equal to constant which implies P is equal to C divided by V to the power n. Now, after uh, this integration, we will have the final expression for work transfer is M times r bar by m so it is nothing but mass into p2 minus t1 divided by 1 minus n now here we do not know what is the mass and we have to find out uh, what is the mass so total mass would be 0 0.3 kg plus 0 0.2 kg that is 0. 5 kg and what is the molecular weight of the mixture that molecular weight of the mixture m would be mass divided by number of moles so here we have nco2 plus no2 now what is nco2 nco2 is equal to mass of co2 divided by its molecular weight of co2 so mass of the CO2 is 0 0.3 and molecular weight of CO2 is 44 and this number is 0 0.0068 kilo mole. Similarly M N2 mass of N2 divided by molecular of weight of N2 this is mass is 0 0.2 molecular weight is 28 and this value is 0 0.0071 kilo mole so thus we can say what is the molecular weight of mixture is equal to m m is total mass 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.0068 plus 0 0.0071 this value is 35.97 and this is nothing but we call this as a apparent molecular weight weight of mixture so we know all the numbers so we can insert the values to calculate what is work transfer work transfer would be 0 0.5 r what is r bar r bar is 8314 or you can say 8.314 kilojoule per kilo mole kelvin and 8.314 divided by 35.97 into t2 minus t1 374 minus T1 is 300. Entire thing divided by 1 minus 1.25. So when we evaluate this number, we get W is equal to minus 34.2 kilojoule, which implies that compression work. 
negative sign implies that it is a compression work. Okay, so now next part is that we need to calculate the heat transfer. So for heat transfer, we need to go for the heat transfer by first law. So we can write Q is equal to delta U plus W. W from our previous expression we have already calculated that W is minus 34.2 kilojoule. Now to calculate delta U and we need the information for mixture at its initial state and final states. So let us see how you are going to evaluate delta U. Delta U is you say U2 minus U1. What is U2? That is number of moles of CO2 into U bar CO2 at temperature T2 minus U bar CO2 at temperature T1 plus that is U2. Now U1 is N O2 sorry N2 number of moles of N2 so uh, U bar N2 at state 2 minus U bar N2 at state 1. So here we require the information about the molar specific internal energy at two different temperatures. So we need to recall or use the thermodynamic data table. And this is available in any of the thermodynamic group book towards the end. So in this case we need to find out four numbers for N2 as well as CO2. So let us see what is U bar CO2 at temperature T2, temperature T2 final temperature is 374 Kelvin. This value is 9198 kilojoule per kilo mole. Then U bar CO2 at 300 Kelvin. This value is 6939 kilojoule per kilo mole. Then U bar N2 at 374 Kelvin. This value is 7770 kilojoule per kilo mole u bar n2 at 300 kelvin this number is 6229 kilojoule per kilo mole so we already know what is nco2 that is 0 0.0068 kilo mole n n2 0 0.0071 kilo mole. So all the data we have then we can get this delta U as 26.3 kilo joule. Hence Q would be minus 7.9 kilo joule which means that compression increases the temperatures which means heat transfer from the system. Okay. And last one is we need to calculate the change in the entropy. So the entropy change if you want to calculate that is delta S we can use it as N CO2 delta S bar CO2 plus N N2 into delta S bar N2. So important thing you need to calculate here this delta S for CO2 and L2. So 
this value has to be calculated with respect to absolute entropy concept for which the absolute values need to be calculated at given temperature only. So, for that we can say this is represent S bar O for CO2 at temperature T2 minus S bar O for CO2 at temperature T1 minus R bar ln P2 by P1. Similarly, we can write it delta S bar for N2 that is an entropy absolute entropy for N2 at temperature T2 absolute entropy for N2 at temperature T1 minus R bar ln P2 by P1. So, these values needs to be calculated. So, again similar way we can note down this number from the data table book that is S bar O CO2 at 374 Kelvin. This is 222.47 kilojoule per kilo mole Kelvin. S bar CO2 O at 300 Kelvin. This is 213.91 kilojoule per kilo mole Kelvin. Then for N2 S bar N2 O at 374 Kelvin is equal to 198.1 kilojoule per kilo mole Kelvin. S bar O N2 at 300 Kelvin this number is 191.7 kilojoule per kilo mole Kelvin. So, we know all the numbers of course, we know P2 as 3 bar, P1 1 bar, R bar 8.314 kilojoule per kilo mole Kelvin. So, by inserting these numbers, we can get that what is delta S is equal to minus 0 0.0231 kilojoule per Kelvin. So, mixing process it is a negative quantity. So, that means entropy during the mixing since heat transfer is negative. So, you also get entropy as a negative value. Okay. Now, in the next problem we are going to talk about a situation in which a dry air is mixed with a stream of oxygen and this mixing process is an adiabatic process. So, it is a case of adiabatic mixing. So, adiabatic mixing means we have two streams they come in contact with each other stream 1 case state 2 and state 3 at state 1 we say it is air and it is coming at flow rate. So, flow rate means area times velocity. I will multiply this as 100 meter cube per minute. P1 1 bar P1 32 degree centigrade that is 305 Kelvin. State 2 it is oxygen and oxygen it is condition is P2 1 bar T2 127 degree centigrade. So, this is 400 Kelvin and the final mixing stream that is we say mixed stream. The mixed stream has a condition uh, P3 
the same pressure 1 bar but temperature T3 is 47 degree centigrade so this is 320 Kelvin the final temperature is this uh, it comes as 320 degree Kelvin which means that composition of air and oxygen are adjusted together so that final temperature is reached now to do that we need to recall two things one is the mass balance and energy balance and this mass balance and energy balance will give you the information about the mass flow rate and mole fraction how do you do that so first thing is we have to find out what is m dot a1 which is area a b1 for the stream 1 divided by its specific volume of air and to calculate the specific volume we need to require the information like this so we have molecular weight of air that is 28.97 we know temperature t1 32 or, or 305 kelvin p1 1 bar and then r bar is 8314 joule per kg mole kelvin so this will give you specific volume va1 and as 0.875 meter cube per kg and we have a b1 area times volume flow rate 100 meter cube per minute so these two information will give you as mass flow rate of air that is ma1 as 114.3 kg per minute so we have mass flow rate of air we do not know mass flow rate of oxygen we also do not know mass flow rate of mixed stream now when i say mixed streams i can assume that uh, mass of uh, air m dot a1 is equal to m dot a3 and m dot o2 is equal to m dot o3 so this is the things then we have to consider the energy balance so energy balance will you can write as m dot a h a at temperature t1 that is for air so m dot oxygen enthalpy of oxygen at temperature t2 minus that is enthalpy inlet enthalpy exit enthalpy will be m dot a h a p3 plus m dot o h a h o t3 that is equal to 0 so by putting this conditions we write this this will give you m dot o is equal to m dot a h a t3 minus h a t1 divided by h o t3 t2 minus h o t1 so we require enthalpy information at different temperatures so we say H A air at temperature T3 320 Kelvin. So this number is 320.3 kilojoule per kg. H O oxygen is also same temperature 320 Kelvin. This value will be 9325 divided by molecular weight of oxygen kilojoule per kg you remember you need to find out enthalpy in kilojoule per kg similarly ha for 
305 Kelvin that is inlet state for air this value is 305.2 kilojoule per kg and HO for at the inlet state 400 Kelvin this is 11711 divided by 32 kilojoule per kg so this data we get from the thermodynamics any thermodynamic books towards the end of this chapters or books so after inserting these numbers we get m dot o as 23.1 kilojoule per minute so this gives the information about mass flow rates now once you have mass flow rate then we can get mole fraction secondary information you require mole fractions so mole fractions that is n dot a is equal to m dot a by m a and m dot a is uh, mass of air 114.3 divided by molecular of air 28.97 this is 3.95 kilo mole per minute and n o2 is m dot o2 divided by molecular weight of o2 that is 23.1 divided by 32 that is 0 0.72 kilo mole per minute so total number of moles n is equal to this plus this 4.67 kilo mole per minute then y a mole fraction of a is n dot a by n 0 0.846 y dot o o2 is equal to n dot O2 divided by N this is 0 0.154 and last part is entropy production. So entropy production equation is written through the control volume equation and that is we have to write it clearly that is for air M dot A SA at temperature T1 P1 plus M dot oxygen and oxygen is at temperature T2, P2 this is the initial state and final state will have M dot A, AR, SA and the final state is at temperature T3 and AR is at pressure that is its mole fraction into final pressure P3 plus m dot o oxygen entropy for oxygen to be calculated at temperature t3 and pressure is uh, the partial pressure of oxygen would be y oxygen y o2 into p3 plus sigma dot is equal to 0 ok and this when you solve it it gives the expression that sigma dot is m dot a sa t3 into ya p3 minus sa at t1 p1 plus m dot o oxygen at temperature t3 y o o P3 minus entropy oxygen at temperature T2 P2. So, this is nothing but delta S for air and this is delta S for oxygen and property value need to be evaluated and this is equal to SA or we say absolute value of entropy at T2 minus absolute value of air at T1 
minus r bar by m a into ln y a p3 by p1. So the term 1 is equal to this term 2 will be S A means absolute value for oxygen O for at temperature T2 minus absolute value of for oxygen at temperature T1 minus R bar by M oxygen into ln Y oxygen P3 divided by P1. So, property data table needs to be evaluated. So, this number is 1.77, this number is 1.71, these values are kilojoule per kg Kelvin. This value is 207 by 32 and this value is 213 by 32 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. So, what we already know MA and MO in our earlier data P3 YA we already know P3 is known P1 is known. So, by inserting these values we get sigma dot is 17.4 kilojoule per Kelvin minute. So, entropy production during this mixing process is 17 kilojoule per Kelvin per minute. So, just to summarize these things, although you see these uh, expressions are written, but you should understand the notation in which or which framework it is written. So, based on the which it will be easy for you to calculate the property values directly from the book. So, only it is a matter of inserting a data in a given equations even though notations are looks little bit um, complicated, but if you are used to it, then it will be very easy to solve this kind of problems. Rather, this solution is just an addition or subtractions, but the way of representing in terms of notations normally takes time. Okay, with this viewpoint and understanding, and I will close this lecture for today, and also we close this module. 4. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.